everybody. This is the new ultrasound machine. Uh, it's called Spark and uh, we nicknamed it Sparky. I just want to go over some of the features that you need to know about as nursing staff. You will not be using the machine, but you may be required to uh, turn it on, turn it off, move it from place to place. So um, first thing is it's on right now. It's lit up and the on indicator is this button here. So it is a green circle with a line through it. And we are going to leave the machine on and plugged in. Plugged in shows that, that there is a uh, like a white lightning bolt through the battery. We're going to leave it on and plugged in all the time. However, one time in 24 hours, the machine should be turned off and restarted. And to turn it off, it does take two minutes to power down and another two minutes to power up. But what you're going to do is using your thumb, you're going to just press this key down and it'll turn off and then you can turn it back on. Most, I'm not going to do that now because we don't have two minutes to, for you to wait and watch me do that. So the rest of the time you're going to be, let's move this little fluffy thing off of here. You're going to be seeing it lit up like that, but we're not going to be leaving it like this all the time when it's not in use. You're going to be using this button here. It looks like a moon. So when the unit is asleep, the moon is yellow. And then just to touch it, it'll come back up. If you need to clean this screen here, we advise that you touch the lock button. Okay, and then you can clean it with the uh, hydrogen peroxide wipes in the green canister. And then you'll also get a message up here that the keyboard is locked. Just touch it again. You have to hold it and it comes back. Okay, to clean the screen, as I said in the Friday file from last week, just a damp paper towel. That. Um, the other features of this machine is that it can go up and down and what I'm doing is I'm just squeezing these two little buttons in here and I can move it up and down so if someone's sitting they can put it down or up and if you just press here the keyboard will come out. So these are features mainly that the physicians will be using. There is one abdominal ultrasound um, probe here. We don't have the vaginal probe on here we're thinking that it'll probably be kept in the physician's call, the OBS call. When you're going to use the machine or move it from uh, triage, you're going to unplug it and pass it back here. There's an area to loop your cords. Okay, so you don't have to unplug it from the machine. If you were going to be moving the machine, what I would suggest is that because this is an articulating arm, you don't want to be running or walking with it and having this move over. So what you're going to do is just kind of sandwich it here between your hands, click it into place, and then just push the screen down so that you can see over top of it as you're walking. With it. There are some lock uh, brakes on it here. So if it was locked, the uh, rep said it's probably better just to push down the green and the red one. To unlock it, you just going to push the gray one. And to move it, it's, a, it's on a swivel right now. So what she recommends is to put it on the green one. So it is like the fifth wheel on your, on your stretcher or a steer mode. And it actually moves quite easily and it steers quite well. Georgia, is there anything I have forgotten to say? I don't know. Oh, be just a quick tip sheet. Thank you. So last week I attached this to the Friday file, sort of the getting started quick tip sheet for everybody. And there are some sheet notes here for the physicians. Okay. And I will attach this again to the, um, I'll attach the PDF to the Friday file for this week. So I think that's everything. So so in this video, we're going to go over how to use the ultrasound machine. Um, every machine is going to be a little bit different, but the basic functions are going to be the same for every machine. You just have to find out where the buttons are. So for this machine, it's a Philips Spark machine. Um, the first thing you want to do is select the correct transducer. So right here, where it says transducer, push that. It changes the transducer. So if you look at the top, left of the screen where it says S4-2. That is the type of probe. So here you see this as S4-2. Switch to that. So 
I push the transducer again, it goes to L12-4, which corresponds to this transducer, L12-4. Right, so that the 12-4 corresponds to the uh, frequency of the probe. So the higher the frequency of the probe, the more superficial uh, structures you can scan, and the lower frequency, the better penetration, but the lower resolution. So pick the appropriate probe for your application. So after you pick the appropriate probe, you want to uh, pick the appropriate application for the probe. So right underneath the transducer it says exam. So I push exam. You see on the top right of the screen, it gives me options on which applications I want to use. So the, uh, for the linear probe, we have musculoskeletal applications, ocular, arterial, venous, vascular access, lung, or nerves. So depending on what you're scanning, make sure you uh, select the correct preset because that will optimize your frequency and your penetration for that application. So if we switch back to the phase array probe, if I go to the exam there, um, you can see that there's abdominal, cardiac, pelvic, fast scan mode, lung, and additional ones too if you want um, to open up more. So the main ones you're going to use are probably abdominal, cardiac, and pelvic. Um, one thing to note is by default this machine goes on to cardiac and you notice that the indicator is on the right side of the screen. Um, that's only for cardiac. If we switch to abdominal mode, you see that that indicator on the screen switches to the left side. The indicator is where that P is on that screen. So just make sure you are on the correct mode before you start scanning um, or else you won't get your optimal images. So after you pick the correct probe, pick the, pro the, pick the correct preset, you're going to start scanning. So now we're just going to do a, a sample scan of the forearm and I'm going to switch to a linear probe, so the L the linear probe with uh, say it's a musculoskeletal application. Okay, so now we're going to scan forearm and just look at let's say the radial artery. So the radial artery is on the top of the screen right here. And what you can see on the right side of the screen is the depth. So there's a two centimeter and four centimeter area on the screen on the right side. That corresponds to how far your ultrasound uh, beam is penetrating. So the middle here corresponds to the depth. So if I increase the depth here you see that the number goes to 4.5 and to 5 and that's increasing my depth and Let's me um, see deeper structures. If I decrease my depth, if I'm looking for the radial artery, I don't need to look at the bones and the structures beneath that. I just want to focus on the radial artery, so I want to decrease my depth to make sure I can see that structure. It's kind of like using a camera and really um, zooming in on the structure or the, uh, the, the point of interest. So here is appropriate depth for the radial artery, and you can see that's right in the middle of the other thing besides depth um, that you need to really get a grasp of is the gain. So these buttons right here on the right side are the gain. So if I go up, you see the gain increases or it gets, makes the screen brighter. And if I go down, it makes it less bright. So the gain just basically makes it brighter. You can tap it too, or you can just go up and down. Like I said, every machine will have a gain and depth button, um, so you just have to find where those are. Um, the other button that some machines have is called the focus button. So here to the left is the focus. So if you look on the right side of the screen, there's a couple of arrows. And if I go up and down, you see that. You see the arrows moving up and down on that right side? So that corresponds to the focus. So um, when you're on uh, any modes, that, like cardiac mode, you want to make sure that the focus is on the area of interest because that will, that will increase your resolution wherever that focus is. All right? So once again, I'm going to optimize my depth here. So another important uh, topic to go over is color flow Doppler. So for color flow Doppler, um, you can see in the top right of the screen, you push the color flow, which is just this button right here, and that will turn on the color flow Doppler. Red means towards the probe and blue means away from the probe. It's a concept called BART, B-A-R-T. So that helps remember blue is away, red is towards. So here I am going to tilt my probe so blood is going towards my probe and you can see that the flow is red. So now I'm going to shift the angle with that same artery in view. I'm going to shift it now. The blood flow is going to go away from my probe. Now it's blue. So remember that red does not mean artery, blue does not mean vein. It just means which way the direction of blood flow is going towards my probe, either away or towards. Right? So the other mode 
that is important is called M mode or motion mode. So here we're just gonna look at go to lung setting and on this scan we're looking at the lung sliding of the visceral parietal pleura sliding across each other. So if I put an M mode cursor on, you see the yellow dots going straight down. So if you think about those, that line right there, and the ultrasound probe will only measure motion along that one line. You push the M mode button to activate it, you see that everything else disappears. Just imagine it's just scanning that one line over time. And that will give you the motion of, uh, motion of the you know, structure of interest over time. So this is normal lung sliding. And you can see that it has a sandy appearance when he's breathing in and out. And that motion of that pleura is captured in the end. So another important application for the novology section is using the freeze button. So a lot of times when you have a structure that's moving fast and you want to examine a single image at one point in time, you can freeze the image and then scroll back so here is the parasitic long axis view of the heart. I'm going to freeze the image. So it freezes it, but in addition, you can actually scroll back to a few beats afterwards to see if there's a certain area that you're really interested in. Also, so that's the freeze mode. And if you push acquire or save, it will actually save that image to the system if you want to review it later on.